All right, in this video, we're going to show you how to set up an S parameter simulation uh, and run the simulation using some of the new cadence tools uh, that are uh, out since the last video I recorded on doing S parameter simulations. So let's go ahead and do a new schematic. So go to a file, new cell view. We'll call the cell view test underscore matching underscore network NW. And we'll give a view name, schematic. And we're going to press I and we're going to insert some ports from analog lib. Now, let's just say that we're going to try and match from 10 plus J 20 ohms. We'll add a second port and let's say we're gonna try and match to 50 minus J 100 ohms. All right, we have our two ports defined, and now we're gonna try and accomplish this match on the Smith chart. So remember, we're going from 10 plus J20, and we'll try and do this match at five gigahertz. All right, so let's put our starting impedance in, 10 plus J20. We can see that on the Smith chart. And remember, we're going to try and go to 50 minus J100 with a, con with a conjugate match. And this means that we need to match to 50 plus J100. So I'm gonna put an impedance marker at 50 plus J100 on the Smith chart. And by the way, I'm using this Will Kelsey uh, Smith chart online, a very handy tool. All right, so you can see I'm gonna try and go from this point DP1 over to my marker point MP0. I can use any network uh, that I want to. Um, so uh, I can see that I can accomplish this match uh, in a couple of different ways. Uh, one, I can take a shunt capacitor and go down to uh, the 50 ohm line. Uh, and then I can uh, take a series inductor and go up to uh, MP0. Here, I'm just trying out some different networks until I get to where I want to be. All right, pretty close there. All right, so you can see uh, going from DP1 to MP0 here, if I use a shunt 1.25 picofarad and a series 3.1 nanohenry, that uh, just about accomplishes my match. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna add that network. So it was a shunt 1.25 picofarads. And a series. 3.1 nano -henries. All right, I'm gonna add wires by pressing W and then connecting the nodes on the circuit. I'm going to label the bottom node as ground and I'm gonna check and save. All right, it uh, is giving me a warning because it doesn't like how close these two components are. If I stretch things out just a little bit and recheck and save, it'll get rid of that warning. All right, now I'm going to go to Launch ADE Explorer and I have to create a new view because I haven't made one yet. 
I'm going to create a view, uh, same name as before, test matching underscore and W with a maestro view or maestro. All right, so it should be uh, bringing that uh, window up in a new tab uh, in the same window as the schematic. All right, so we can see that it brought the Maestro view up. Now, we aren't using any components from special libraries, so we don't need to worry about adding any models or anything like that uh, for the time being. Uh, so really, we just need to go ahead and add an analysis. So here uh, in this uh, setup window, uh, we can go to click to add analysis, change that to SP. We're gonna select our ports in the order that we want them to be on the schematic. So for instance, I'm going to select port zero will be port, will actually be number one and port one will actually be number two when we start looking at our S parameters. So here is our list of ports. We're going to sweep frequency. Uh, we know that we're trying to match at 5 gigahertz, so why don't we sweep from 1 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz. We can do this with a linear sweep, and let's just do this with a step size of 10 megahertz. So 1G to 10G with a step size of 10 capital M. And everything else uh, for the time being should be uh, okay. Of course, if we were doing differential uh, uh, or mixed mode S parameters, we, uh, we could uh, check that here. And if we were doing noise analysis, uh, we could check uh, yes for the noise analysis, uh, but we're using a purely lossless passive network. Uh, so none of that's going to matter. All right, so let's click okay. Uh, it should add the analysis uh, to our setup window. Uh, and uh, if we wanna run the simulation, we can just check the play button uh, or click the play button here. All right, it's going to uh, compile this simulation. It's a pretty small simulation, so this shouldn't take too long. All right, so we can see that the simulation started, and in fact, uh, the simulation is compiling, and it's just about to run. It runs, it's very small, so it should run quickly, uh, and we can now view the results. So we'll go to direct plot, main form, and we want to check a couple of things here. We want to check to see if the match is good. So we're going to look at rectangular plots, DB20 of the input reflection. The output reflection, it's a symmetric network. So these should be the same. And the transmission all right so we have s11 s22 s21 and s12 now s11 and s22 should be the same and s21 and s12 should be the same uh, in this particular case uh, ideally uh, this is a bandpass match uh, that should be centered around 5 gigahertz uh, we can indeed see uh, that the uh, transmission uh, is uh, close to zero dBs at five gigahertz. Uh, this means that we're very well matched at five dBs, it, it, sorry, at five gigahertz. We can also see that the reflection at five gigahertz is a very small negative number. This means that there's very little reflection at five gigahertz. So indeed we do have a good match. Now, oftentimes we measure uh, a match uh, by the three dB bandwidth of the match. So I'm going to go to marker, create marker, and I'm going to create a horizontal marker in the Y position that's minus 3 dBs. And I'm going to put the marker on here and I can see, of course, where the marker crosses each of these uh, individual lines. I'm looking at the light blue or cyan colored line, which is S21. And I can see that it crosses at about 1.5 gigahertz and again at about 8.7 gigahertz. So we have a 3 dB bandwidth that is uh, just about uh, 7.2 uh, gigahertz, uh, centered at uh, five gigahertz. 
All right, so this is how we uh, run an S-parameter simulation and how we interpret some of the plots in the S-parameter simulation. Now, we can also do one additional thing here. Let's, uh, instead of plotting S11 and S22 uh, as a rectangular plot, let's plot them on a Smith chart. Uh, I don't need to plot both S11 and S22 since I know that they're going to be the same. Now, as I uh, hover around the Smith chart, you can see that, that uh, we have a very nice match uh, that is very close to five gigahertz. Uh, this is right at the center of the chart. Uh, this means that the reflection coefficient is very small. Of course, as I go to a much lower frequency, the match gets worse. And as I go to a much higher frequency, the match gets worse. Uh, but I can also see the impedance trajectory uh, of uh, the S parameters uh, as I change the frequency. All right, so with that, we will go ahead and stop. Uh, we now know how to do an S parameter simulation using the uh, ADE Explorer environment rather than the old ADE L environment.